Oh man, this thing is running really bad. Check engine lights flashing. I gotta pull over, this has gotta be bad. Oh no! Oh jeez. Now this is not good. The engine light flashing and the engine shaking around like a maniac, you cannot drive your car like this. It's super unsafe. Luckily for me, I can go to 1AAuto.com, get all my parts shipped fast and free. Let's get this thing in the studio and check it out. Hey friends, it's Len from 1A Auto. So those gas prices, huh? It's getting a little ridiculous these days, especially for a guy like me that likes to drive around in a big old V8. So you probably noticed that we've been putting out a whole bunch of helpful videos that have to do with fuel economy. You're probably wondering, what does a flashing check engine light have anything to do with fuel economy? I want to talk about it. Now first, let's talk about other symptoms that you might happen to find either prior to that engine light flashing or even when it is flashing. You might find that you have a misfire of some sort. It just feels as though when you're driving, the engine's shaking around and maybe you don't even have as much power as it felt like you had. Maybe while the vehicle's running, if you were to get around to the backside, you might smell this awful smell in the air. You take a look at the tailpipe and you can see some smoke coming out of there. It's not good to breathe in, believe me. You could even notice that you're getting even worse fuel economy than what you normally would, even in a V8 like this one right here. So why is the check engine light flashing? Now typically the reason why your check engine light is going to flash is because the computer realizes that something very bad is happening with the engine and you're not exactly burning up all those fuel molecules that are inside the engine and they're getting shot right out the tailpipe. So it's trying to make sure everything's going fine even though it really isn't. It's going to let you know. Now inside that combustion chamber, inside your engine, for proper combustion and the most amount of horsepower and fuel economy, you should have one part of fuel getting mixed with 14.7 parts of air. Now inside that combustion chamber, all this is going to be packed right inside there, especially once that piston starts coming all the way up to near that spark plug. Once it gets very close to it, the spark plug is going to go make a little spark, ignite all that fluid and the air inside the system. Boom! A big combustion happens, it forces down that piston and it makes the engine turn over. Now that's going to happen several times, obviously if you've got a four cylinder, you've got four of these doing this. Eight cylinder, you've got a whole bunch of them. Now if you had an issue with the amount of air getting put in the system and maybe it was too much fuel for the amount of air, well then of course you're going to have a running condition. You're not going to have the proper combustion inside that cylinder and it's probably mostly going to get blown right out through that exhaust. So you can imagine how this is going to affect your fuel economy, your runnability, and of course your safety overall. There you go. Now you know a couple of reasons why you might have a running rich condition. Now obviously driving around with your check engine light flashing is not a good idea. Not only is it unsafe for the vehicle overall, it could potentially cause some serious damage, but believe it or not, with all the heat that could be created, could even start a fire depending on where you park it. Okay, so now that we're under here, we can have a nice clear look. Up in the front of the vehicle is where the engine and transmission is going to be on most passenger vehicles. It's going to, of course, have exhaust that leads down along the center of the vehicle, and it leads all the way out to the back where your mufflers and the tailpipe's going to be. Super essential that all this is in good working order. That way there, all of your exhaust makes its way out of the back of the vehicle and as far away from the passenger compartment as possible. Now that we went over that real quick, let's talk more in detail about the catalytic converter. That's this area right along here. Typically, for a catalytic converter, it's going to have two sensing agents that are near it. There should be a downstream O2 sensor, which would be located between the catalytic converter and, of course, the rest of the exhaust leading out. And then further up towards the engine, there should be another O2 sensor. One's considered the upstream, which is closest to the engine, and the other one's considered the downstream, which is further away from the engine. Inside of this catalytic converter, there's actually going to be a honeycomb inside there. It's not like a bee honeycomb or anything like that, but it does kind of almost resemble it in a way. You know what, I try to explain what's going on inside here, but I don't feel like you can visually imagine what it is without actually physically seeing it. So, you know, I'm not going to probably take the one out of this car. It's a really nice car. I've got one laying around. Let's cut it up and have a look. All right, so I got this thing cut apart so we can have a closer look. This is a much different catalytic converter than what's inside that vehicle. As you can tell, this one's pretty much part of the exhaust manifold. So essentially, this would be right up against the engine. You can imagine how much heat is going to go through this exhaust. Now, what I did is I cut off the very end right here, and you can have a look inside. All this area right here is that honeycomb that I was talking to you about. 
the hot air from the exhaust is supposed to get rushed through this area here. And as it gets forced through all these little tiny holes, it's going to, of course, heat this up to a very hot temperature. And that's going to burn up all the carbon and everything else that's coming through that exhaust that needs to be burnt up before it gets out to the environment. So that's essentially what it's going to do inside. It's going to start glowing a little bit. It's basically supposed to look like that. But if you add a little bit of liquid, you can imagine what it's going to do inside. If I had gasoline all built up inside this and I could have a look inside, it's probably going to have a lot of clogged ports. As that's happening, it's going to increase the amount of pressure inside here, increase the heat, and you're more than likely going to see this catalytic converter start glowing underneath the vehicle, which overall is very bad. Super unsafe, and of course, it's not any good for the vehicle overall. Now, why would this car right here be running rich slash dumping fuel? Now, there's going to be a whole bunch of reasons why this could potentially happen that are component related. We're going to go over three of the main reasons. One of them is going to have to do with spark plugs. After that, we're also going to talk about coils, ignition coils, that is. And then, of course, some vehicles are going to have spark plug wires. Any of these things could cause an issue with spark, and we're going to talk about them all. Now it's time to talk about a quick diagnosis process. Now for me personally, typically I like to use a scan tool of some sort. Something like this can of course pull codes, but it can also do charting. So essentially I can see exactly what's going on inside each of my cylinders. I can read the injectors, I can read a whole bunch of things. Not everybody's got a couple thousand bucks that they want to go ahead and buy one of these just so they can work on their own vehicle once in a while, but it is a good idea to have something. Typically, a scanner like this is going to be a lot cheaper than the larger one. You're not going to be able to do as much, but at least it'll kind of give you an idea of where to start looking. Now, let's go with the assumption for some reason you don't have either of these. You're just going to kind of pop your hood and you want to try to figure out what's going on. Let's go with that assumption. I'm going to get right under the hood here and start talking about it. We want to start paying attention to where those coils might be. We have ignition coils on this particular vehicle. It's an eight cylinder. That essentially tells me that I should have four and then on the other side of the engine, I should have another four. Now, some engines are going to run front to back and others are going to be transverse like this one right here. So you might find they have spark plugs on one side and the other or even front to back like this one right here. Typically, when I'm looking at coils, the areas that I want to pay attention to are the plastic areas. I'm trying to see if it looks like it's cracked, damaged or broken in any way. I'm just going to take a quick peek at all of them real quick. Once I give it a quick visual inspection, the next thing that I always do is not try to disconnect it. I just try to grab onto the wiring, give it a little tug to make sure it's secure. If it's not secure, it's not going to be sending power reference down to this coil. It's not going to create the spark leading down to the spark plug and you're going to have an issue. Give him a little wiggle. That one looks like it moves a lot actually. Let me get this thing. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that kind of solved that real quick. Um, I would just go down the line and do all of these. Essentially, I'm going to be pulling out all the coils anyways to be able to check things. So I'm just going to go down the line and just double check everything. This one. Oh, here we go. Who worked on this thing? Okay. Oh, all right. That's one is in there. That one's in there. Now let's go with the assumption that you went ahead and you checked all the wiring harnesses and you knew for sure that they were nice and tight to the coils. The next thing that I always do is just grab onto the coil itself and I'm going to try to give it a wiggle. I want to make sure it's bottomed out and secure up against the valve cover. If it isn't, there could potentially be moisture making its way inside underneath between where the spark plug is. That's going to cause a restriction. Obviously, it's going to cause a running condition. But if you find that you have a flashing check engine light, that essentially is telling you that you have something serious going on. It's not just one cylinder isn't firing properly. Typically, it's going to be multiple or there could even be other things going on essentially. So in our case right here, I can see already that I have two cylinders that weren't even connected in properly. They might not have been making any contact, if any. Um, and if that's the case, like I said, it's not going to create spark making its way down to those spark plugs. But I'm not going to stop here. Like I said, I need to get these coils out of the way so we can have a look at the spark plugs which are located underneath them. Once I have the coils out, we'll take a closer look at those as well. Okay. So now we can have a closer look at the coil itself. Inside this area right here, there should be a little circuit board. I'm going to go ahead and take one of these apart so we can have a look. All right, so there's that side right there. You can see all those little connectors. They're supposed to come through from the other side. You can see the shiny areas. That leads directly into here. Let's see if we can get this apart a little further here. I'm just going to make sure this is tight. All right. Can see where those connectors make their way into this area here. This feels like it's another cover of some sort. Uh, let's pop that off there as well. I want to know. Oh dang. 
Okay. So inside there's exactly where those terminal ends go to. Here we go. Oh. All right. Now we're cruising. So the electrical current is going to come in through this area right here, make its way through those tabs. It's going to find its way into this area, down along through the top here, comes down along the back, makes its way into here. It's going to go ahead and generate that energy around inside this coil, send it right on down through this area, down to your spark plug. What you want to pay attention to is to make sure you don't see any heat cracks anywhere on these. It's very common. If the engine gets hot, the plastic's going to get dry and brittle and it's going to break over time. If you look inside either of the ports, whether it's the spark plug hole right here, or even if it's the connector port, if you see any funny colors, it's probably corrosion. And if that's the case, you're going to have some sort of restriction and you might not be getting good spark making its way down to that spark plug in there. So let's have a quick look at what it might look like if you did have some corrosion inside the area. Now looking inside here, you can see that I have chunks of green, might even look a little bit blue in some areas. Uh, that's generally due to the fact that moisture made its way inside here, obviously. How would it make its way in there? Like I mentioned before, the heat of the engine could cause those heat cracks or even maybe you were leaning on the engine while you're working on it or trying to disconnect the electrical connector, just trying to really pull on it hard. And you went ahead and cracked it. You didn't really think it was such a big deal. Moisture made its way in and now you have an issue. Something to quickly mention, if you find that you have an issue with one of the coils, obviously this is an extreme case. Typically, I like to replace all of them at the same time. If I have a four cylinder, I replace four. If I have a six cylinder, six, eight, eight. Why would I just go ahead and replace one when I found that I had an issue with it? I know they're a little costly and I'm not trying to spend money on you, but I'm just trying to think of what's the best thing to do so you don't have to worry about dealing with this again in the future. The next thing that I want to do is have the vehicle running in a nice open area with plenty of ventilation, of course. Now what I want to do is carefully make my way to one coil at a time. While the vehicle's running, I'm going to go ahead and carefully disconnect this. And what I want to do is see if the engine seems like it runs worse or if it seems like it runs the same, it's still misfiring, it's still doing whatever it was already doing before. If it seems as though it's running worse than what it was before, that essentially tells me that this coil would be in good condition, it's functioning properly, but when I disconnected it, it stopped making the spark and it's making the engine run worse. If I unplugged it and the engine stayed the same, still running very poorly, typically that means that the coil right here or even the spark plug could be the issue and it's an area that I want to start. Don't just stop with the first one that you find though, you need to check them all. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the spark plugs. The spark plugs are going to be located mounted inside the engine. Generally they can be out in the open a little bit on some cars or even sometimes down inside a tube like this one right here, protected. Using a spark plug socket, you can tell that the spark plug's stuck inside there, which is a good thing. We don't want it to fall. Now we can go ahead and remove it from the socket, and we'll talk about inspecting it. Now when you look at a spark plug, typically you're not going to see any of this that's located behind my fingers right here. This is going to be inside the engine. You can see all those threads. They're threaded right in, and that's where the spark's going to come from that's inside the combustion chamber. And when that happens, it's going to create the combustion, make that engine turn over, and all the exhaust is going to get pushed right out that tailpipe. Now to do an inspection on a spark plug, of course you could use a spark plug tester. Not everybody necessarily has one, but it is something that's good to have. But what I want to do is quickly visually inspect each one of them. Go ahead and turn it around and around, and essentially we're paying attention to this ceramic area right here, which is considered the insulator. Now if you happen to see black lines on this insulator right here, that typically means that it's cracked, in which case a spark could be making its way through this center area here, which runs all the way down and it's going to ground out on something, maybe potentially your engine or something the like. So if you see cracks, moisture could make its way inside there and cause some sort of resistance or restriction of some sort. So you want to definitely pay attention to that. If you see any cracks, you have to replace the spark plug. When you do them, you do them as a set. Looking at this right here, you can see this little hooky do that goes off like that. That's considered a ground strap. Now if you look in the very center of the spark plug, you can see that little itty bitty tip on there. Different spark plugs have different size units in there. Essentially that's the electrode. It can be made out of several different things such as platinum, uh, iridium, or even copper in some cases. Um, anyways, basically what you want to pay attention to is the gap in between those two areas. Different vehicles have different gaps, so of course you'd want to check your manufacturer's specifications, but typically something that's fairly close without touching is pretty common. Now what we want to do is look at that ground strap from this angle here as well and look to see if it looks like it's worn at an angle of some sort. Typically if it's worn at an angle that means the spark's been jumping over to that area and wearing it down. If you have a big gap in this area the spark might not even be strong enough to make that gap and of course create a spark. 
And if that's the case, you're going to have fuel getting dumped into your cylinder, the spark plug's not going to be able to do its job, and you're going to have a running rich condition, which of course will cause an issue with fuel consumption, costing you more at the gas pump, of course, and you're going to have an issue where that catalytic converter could potentially get damaged by all the fuel that isn't getting burnt up in the combustion chamber. When we're talking about the ground straps, I just want to let you know some spark plugs are going to have multiple ground straps. Some only have one, two, sometimes even four. Now with that said, if the spark's jumping around from one to the other and other and other, of course it's going to distribute that spark, but if the gap is off on any of those, it's going to cause an issue. So it's something to think about. Could have multiple ground straps on there. Now there's tools that look like this one right here, which can essentially measure the spark jump, see how far it can jump from this area here to the ground. That way there you know exactly how good of a spark you're getting, and you can even see the color. This might be a little bit hard to use if you have to put it down into the cylinder somehow to be able to actually test that spark. So it's just something that I wanted to mention to you. This would be a good visual aid of how to actually see what your spark looks like. But also to tell if you're even getting a spark, you can use a tool that looks like this. Essentially this area right here would go down onto the spark plug. And then once that's down on there, this one would go into either the wire or even the coil. If you're using a spark plug coil on this right here, you want to be super careful because they put out a lot of energy. You don't want to mess around with that. So we talked a lot about spark plugs, when they're old and they're used and they're inside your vehicle. Maybe they're worn, maybe they're damaged, like a crack of some sort, or even this is uh, damaged down here. But also, what if maybe you knew that you needed spark plugs, you went ahead and you did a tune-up, you replaced all the spark plugs like you should, you checked the coils, or even replaced them all. That's completely up to you. But you still have a misfire, and you still have this dumping fuel situation, or running rich situation. Now why might that happen? You just went ahead and you got yourself some new spark plugs from 1A Auto, you're giving the box a shake. Oh, I like the sound. Oh. Uh, I think it's probably fine. I'll just put it in. See anything wrong with that? So if you look kind of hard, you can see where it is actually darker where those cracks were. So if it was like that on a spark plug, that's something that tells you that your spark plug is definitely an issue and you have to replace them, all of them, at the same time. Well, at this point, we've talked about spark plugs, we talked about ignition coils, but I also want to talk a little bit about spark plug wires. The reason why I talked about spark plug wires last is because they're a little less common in modern day vehicles. Generally, you're going to have a coil that sits directly on top of the spark plug itself, transfers the power directly to it, and you don't necessarily have any resistance in between coming from a wire. Now, why did I want to talk about spark plug wires? It's really not such a big deal. Well, yes it is. Like I said, it transfers the power from either your distributor or even a coil that looks like this one right here, all the way down and over to that spark plug. These can come in many lengths. Sometimes you'll find one that's about this long right here. It has to go from one side of the engine, make its way along the back, all the way over, and then all the way to the front cylinder there. That's going to be a super long wire, and you can imagine how much resistance could be in that. But not only resistance, what else could go wrong with that spark plug wire? Now with those wires being so long, generally they're going to be mounted to something. They want to make sure that they're nice and secure so they can't wobble around and potentially hit up against anything they shouldn't, such as maybe something hot, like an exhaust of some sort, or even maybe something that moves. Maybe you've got a fan, or just the vibrations from your engines rubbing this on something that's metal could potentially put a small tear in it. So this wire right here is what transfers the energy. Everything else that's located around it is to prevent that energy from making its way out. So if you found that you had an issue with one of these wires, whether it was cracked or broken or damaged in any way, that's going to cause an issue where you're having resistance or even making it so you're not getting spark coming through this all the way down to that spark plug. Okay friends, so at this point I think you know what's going on if you have a flashing check engine light. So aside from that, once you figure out what's going on with the engine itself that's causing this issue, go ahead and get on the 1AAuto.com site, check out which parts you need, put them in your cart, and then of course click the fast and free shipping. It's going to get shipped right to your door, so you don't have to worry about driving around in your vehicle while that check engine light's flashing. Super unsafe. Now I hope you liked the video, I hope you found it interesting. If there's something in this video that you think might help somebody out, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video, love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me, it would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell, that way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.